Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do another video in the algorithm series. Um, today's video is going to be hopefully a shorter one and uh, the problem is actually quite a, quite a bit simpler than the last one that we did which was binary gap, uh, which wasn't that complex in itself but it posed uh, some challenges that had to be explained a little bit more. Today's problem is, uh, is a simpler one but I thought it was fun to do because I mean I find all these kind of fun to do. But uh, it's, it's, it's a problem that your first instinct as a programmer, because it's such a simple problem, might be to apply a very uh, simple or, or rudimentary solution to it. But then when you think about it for just another second, you realize that you can get a much better solution or a much more performance solution by simply applying um, a little bit of math and, uh, and solving it that way. So, um, I liked it because I actually posed this problem to uh, a junior developer that um, that works with me and I just wanted to see what his initial reaction would be and um, he his reaction was exactly what I expected and, and I'll go over that actually in a second. Let's first I guess look at the problem and then I'll go over why you may want to solve it a certain way and uh, why you might be feel inclined to do it a certain way. So the problem is called frog jump. It's again from Codility. Um, and the problem that they're posing is a small frog wants to get to the other side of the road. The frog is currently located at position X and wants to get to a position greater than or equal to Y. The small frog always jumps a fixed distance D. So right off the bat, we know we have three variables, uh, X, Y, and D. Uh, count the minimum uh, the minimal number of jumps that the small frog must perform to reach its target. Um, that given three integers x, y, and d return the minimal number of jumps from position x to a position equal to or greater than y. What this means is that they're going to pass in three variables to our function. Um, those variables are going to be the start position x, the end position that we want to get to, and this is going to be how far the, the frog can jump in a single hop. So essentially, uh, this is kind of what they describe here. So the function should return three. In this case, with this example, the function should return three with these parameters because the frog will be positioned as follows. After the first jump, the at position 10 plus 30 equals 40. So that means that if we start at position 10 and we know that we jump by 30, 10 plus 30 equals 40. That's after one jump. After two jumps, 10 plus 30 plus 30, we're at 70. And again, after three jumps, we're at 100. Now, we know that we can, uh, where does it say, to get to a position greater than or equal to y. We know that it's allowed to overshoot. So that means that if we end up at 100, we're still good. Uh, so you don't actually have to end up at 85 if it jumps at a fixed, uh, at a fixed distance. Uh, but what this means to us is that we need to take a look at um, these parameters here and calculate how many jumps we have to get to. Uh, we have to do to get to the, um, uh, the y position. So and here again there are some assumptions here. So what these mean are like these are things you can just assume but they also kind of give you some hints about how maybe you should be solving the problem. Um, x and y, x, y and d are integers within the range of 1 to 1 billion and x is less than or equal to y. So that tells us that we, um, you know, th these integers can actually be quite large. So that's something to consider. And uh, it also tells us that X is always going to be less than or equal to Y. So we don't have to do certain checks or factor in certain things. So when I first looked at this problem and, uh, and, and again, just like when I first asked the junior dev um, uh, how he would approach this problem, even just looking at this, you might be inclined to use a loop and say, okay, let's let's do something with these numbers and loop until we know that we've reached the Y position. And uh, that could work for sure. But then you have to consider what I, what I mentioned earlier. The Y position could be a very large number and the X position could be one. So what that means is that, let's say they give you a, you know, a D of one, which is allowed and they give you an X position of one and a Y position of one billion. Now you're going to have to loop a billion times until you get to your position along those lines. It's going to be a, a lot of iteration. So you don't want to solve it, it with that kind of crude approach by, by looping. 
there might be a better way. And there and this might actually be very obvious to some of you, um, especially computer science people, um, because it's it's actually a very easy easy solution. But again, why I liked it is because even just the way the the problem is framed by you know having these repeating thirties here, you might think, oh, loop, you know. But no, let's let's go over the solution, and I'll describe uh, how to easily solve this. All right, so let's take a look at the solution here. We have x, y, and d. Start, end, and the distance per hop. Um, the first thing we want to do is figure out what that distance actually is between our start position and our end position, and uh, and figure out then figure out how many hops we actually need to make in order to cover that distance. So because we're not starting at zero, we know we're starting at ten in this case, for example. Uh, we know that you know we don't just need to get to eighty-five. What, what we need to do is we need to figure out how many hops we need to make to get to eighty-five. So the way we do that is we figure out the, the difference between these two numbers, which is a simple subtraction. So we take y, subtract uh, x from it, 85 minus 10. So that gives us a distance of 75 that we need to cover uh, with, uh, with our hops. And we're hopping by 30 in this case. So what we do is we take um, our end position, subtract from it our x position. Our, our start position and then that gives us the actual distance between those two and like I said in this assumption x is always going to be less than or equal to y so we know that we don't have to do any kind of edge cases or anything or check anything we can just we always know that we can subtract x from y and get at least a zero uh, which means that we don't have to actually we're already at the end point if we get a zero so let's start with this and use those numbers these numbers here um, for that example so um, if we have um, x, x equals 10 and y equals 85 and d equals 30, then we know that we need to travel, uh, diff would be 75. We have to travel this many units. Okay, so let's take a look at this line right here. This line will tell us how many hops we need to make in order to get to uh, our end position. Now you'll you'll see that obviously it's not a loop or anything like that. It's just a simple uh, ternary expression, which you can tell by this question mark and this colon here. And all a ternary expression does is it tests if this expression here at the beginning is results in true or false. And if it results in a true, then uh, the the expression after the question mark will be the value that the whole expression results in. And the expression after the um, colon will be will be the result of the whole expression. So here we're just returning the actual result of the entire ternary expression, which would be either this or this, depending on whether this is true or false, or this results in a true or false. So as you can see, we're not looping anything. All we're doing is we're we're first getting the uh, result of a modulus between uh, diff and d. And all modulus does is it tests if um, something divides cleanly into something else and uh, what the remainder of that is. So if you remember remainder from school, um, 4 can be divided by 2 cleanly um, and gives us a remainder of 0, right? Um, so if you do 4 modulus 2, you'll get a value of 0 because 2 can fit perfectly inside of 4 twice. Now, if you do uh, 5 modulus 2, then that'll give us a remainder of 1 because 2 fits inside 5 twice, not 3 times obviously because that'll give us a 6, but it'll fit inside 5 twice, which will give a 4, and then 5 minus 4 gives you a 1, so we have a remainder of 1. Um, if you don't know how that is, uh, how that works, then I do recommend actually going back and looking at some r uh, rudimentary math websites or things like that. It's a very simple concept. I probably don't even have to explain any of this, but uh, this is what modulus does. It gives us the remainder of a division. So uh, trying to divide 5 by 2 will give us a remainder of 1, and that's what this will give us. Now let's actually use the numbers that were passed in. So we know we start at 10, we want to get to 85, and we're jumping by 30. And uh, we've already calculated that the distance we need to travel is 75. Well, if we take 75 and divide it by 30, that gives us 2.5. But we can tell that 
there is a remainder here because you can see that this decimal it doesn't cleanly divide. So what I want to do is like you might say, okay, well, we just take the distance and divide it by uh, by the hop size, and then that'll tell you how many hops there are. And if you take uh, let's because these are all integers, if you take diff and divide it. So if you take 75 divided by 30, that'll give us 2.5. But because all of these will result in uh, in integer values, uh, what this will actually give you is a two because it'll truncate the decimal place. Now we know that we actually need three hops in this case to, in order to reach 75. But the result of that division will be a two, which is wrong. We what we want to know is um, how many times does it divide? And if there is a remainder, because that'll tell us that we need to jump one more time. If we have a remainder, if it doesn't cleanly divide, then we need to jump one more time to actually reach our destination. So uh, what what we'll do is we'll say 75 mod 30 will give us a remainder of 15, right? Because 30 will fit twice inside 75, but not three times. And uh, when it fits twice inside 75, that'll give us 60. 75 minus 60 gives us 16, uh, 15. And um, that is the remainder of this expression. So what will happen here is we're going to say, what is the modulus of 70? What is 75 mod uh, 30? We'll get a 15. Because we know that any non-zero value in programming is true and zero is false, right? Like if we're doing, uh, because this is a Boolean expression in the beginning of the ternary operator, then we know that if this results in 15, this will be true. And if it results in zero, it'll will end up here. Uh, because it results in 15, we end up in here. So what we do here is we take diff divided by D. So let's actually bring that back here. Um, and that'll give us 2.5. But because of truncation it's not rounding just to be clear but it'll truncate all, all it's gonna do is it's actually gonna chop off the decimal place and it's gonna give us a value of two well like I said we know that that's wrong because we actually need three hops right so what we're doing is we're saying 75 divided by 30 will result in two and then we add one more to cover that remainder distance that we need to cover the 15 units that are left over so then we uh, we have now returned three hops in the case of this. Now, if let's say our distance that we wanted to travel, uh, if diff, let's say, is equal to um, 90, if we, let's say x is 10, let's actually write out the whole example. Uh, let's say x is 10 and then y is 100 and then d is 30, then what's diff? Diff will be 100 minus 10, which will give us 90. Now, in this case, if we say uh, 90, actually, I'm going to leave that. If we say 90 mod 30, right in here, then that'll give us a remainder of zero because 30 fits inside 90 perfectly three times and we have no remainder. So in three hops, we covered that distance perfectly and that's it. We have solved it. So that's why if there is no remainder, if this results in zero or false, then we just simply return the result of that division. And that's it, really. There's nothing else to it. It's a very simple problem, like I said. I just liked it because um, when I presented it to, to the junior developer um, who you know maybe hasn't done too many of these things and just doesn't have a lot of experience with certain algorithms or writing performant code or whatever the case may be, um, you know their their first reaction was to uh, to use some sort of iterative solution where we loop until we reach a certain value while something or uh, whatever or do something until something and uh, that that could work but like I said it's not performant and as you can see we're not actually looping anything here we just have a simple branch and depending on the result of of this modulus. Uh, we just return what one value or another. So even if we passed in x1 and y1 billion, well, it's just again, just a simple little calculation that returns the result and we don't have to loop a, a billion times or whatever, right? So that's why um, it's often important to consider whether something can be solved mathematically rather than brute force iteratively, right? And um, this just kind of, that's why I like this problem is because it kind of showcased that. You might be inclined to do it one way, uh, but it's actually a lot simpler uh, than you might think.
provided you understand things like modulus and, and whatever. This could also have been written with an if or else, but I just chose to do it in two lines to show you how simple it can be. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something from it. Um, leave your thoughts or suggestions or anything else in the comments. Uh, please make it constructive. Um, if you if you solve this problem a different way, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, let me know if you did. Uh, let me know um, if you have any suggestions for a future algorithm or if you want me to do some of these live, which will be longer videos, which I try to avoid generally. But let me know your thoughts. And uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe and hope to see you again soon.